In this video, I would love to talk about the stages of the software development lifecycle, right? So let's dive right in. This, this whiteboard is fully packed and the reason is that um, the software development lifecycle doesn't have just one definition but the stages could be described from, from uh, different angles depending on how granular you would like to be, all right? So say you would like to be really granular and you work in a corporate environment where everything needs to be structured and you need to talk to different people in different environments, maybe in different uh, subsidiaries. Uh, if the system, if the, if the software affects different branches or, or you know, uh, mother companies, parent companies, whatever, right? So if you want to be really granular, then you would look at all these stages and maybe you could go even a bit further, but say someone in a corporation has an idea, hey, let's initiate this project. Uh, someone, for example, a sponsor in a, in a big company initiates the project then assigns maybe a team to gather requirements. You know, uh, someone who goes from one team to another for, uh, to, you know, visit different uh, stakeholders and uh, gathers requirements. So, so the phase is, uh, is called requirements collection, all right? Phase number three, after we have these requirements, is it even feasible? So someone needs to analyze uh, the, the project is it feasible? Could we actually deliver a project uh, that would that would um, um, deliver these these requirements? Sometimes you know it's not feasible because the project uh, could be way too complex, or maybe it's way too expensive, or maybe uh, the company doesn't have enough resources, uh, internal or external. Number four, system analysis. So in a, in a bigger company, especially if a project uh, touches uh, uh, different systems, someone needs to analyze it. So especially if you, uh, for example, work in a, uh, for example, in a data warehouse, right? Uh, the data warehouse collects data from different systems. So you need to analyze how one change in one of the systems affects the other, the other systems, okay? So system analysis. This, this may not be necessary, for example, in a smaller company, like a small startup that only has one system, then you may not really need a, a very detailed system analysis because you don't have any other systems to analyze, right? Just the one that you are going to build. So you may skip it. That's why I'm saying it also depends on what kind of, um, what kind of a company the, 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 you know, the project uh, is supposed to, be, uh, supposed to be built in or affect. What kind of a team are you looking for, for what kind of a company? So as a recruiter, you need to know that these phases, these stages of the software development lifecycle also depend on the company. All right, number five, software design. And I don't mean just, um, <clears throat> just um, you know, interface design, user, user interface, <clears throat> but I also mean uh, software architecture, all right? So software architecture is often also referred to as, as design, you know, system design, software design. So here in the stage number five, we talk about how the system will work. How should we build the individual components to deliver the desired outcome? Number six, coding. Like finally, say this could take half a year from, from the initial idea so someone here has an idea, hey, let's build something, and then they uh, collect requirements, then they uh, assess if it is feasible, they analyze all the systems, they design how it would work, and only then a developer starts working on the system, all right? Then after, you know, maybe three, six, nine, twelve months of coding, someone starts testing it. So again, a tester, so say this is software developer and here is a tester. And a tester starts testing the code developed by a team of developers. Then we start um, integrating it all. It could, it could also mean that we test um, in different environments. So it could be a staging environment, uh, it could be 
um, testing environment, all right? So we need to test. And the more complex the system is, the more important testing and integration phase actually phases actually are because you need to test how the new project, how the change impacts different systems. So you need to test it in different environments, not you know, before you release it to production. Number nine, operations and maintenance. So um, this is actually already uh, shipped to production. So somewhere here would be, would be um, like, uh, how do I so say, a tick, you know? A box that is ticked like hey everything is good we can we can roll it out we can ship it to customers we can deploy it to production in other words and and from now on the software is is live so here live all right and as soon as it's live someone needs to to maintain it so you know um, software in production usually, I don't know, crashes or there are bugs, someone needs to take care of it, it needs to be maintained, it needs to be fixed, so someone needs to maintain it. Um, eventually, someone decides here, okay, it's time to, to, to close it, it's time to, to dispose it, we need to, um, we need to stop maintaining the project uh, because it no longer serves the purpose or maybe the market evolved or maybe it's no longer needed or maybe it costs more than it uh, earns. So at some point there are decisions uh, to be made, you know, harder decisions and at some point a project that eventually was a great idea three, five, ten years later will be sooner or later, it will be disposed uh, through a way. So the software development lifecycle talks about all these stages, you know, from the idea to, uh, to disposing it to a trash. Well, this doesn't look like a trash. Let's do it again. So say this is a trash and we throw it to the trash eventually, right? So how do we, how, how do we work with data? So say here we collect lots of data about customers, about, um, you know, the, all the emails we've sent them and suddenly we want to uh, close the project. So how do we work with data? How do we work with hardware that uh, contains all this, uh, all this data? You can see this is granular, right? This is granular. This could work in a corporation easily, but um, we could also um, step a little, a little higher on, on a higher level. And for example, for smaller companies, we don't need such a complex uh, um, life cycle, so such a complex uh, set of phases. We can, for example, have only five. First, planning. You know, someone has an idea, you know, it could be one person, a business owner, he plans a few bullet points, hey, let's do this, 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 and that's a plan. You know, it's a high level plan. Uh, they analyze it, you know, is, is, it, is there some market for this? Um, is there any potential? If yes, then let's design it, let's implement it, and then we maintain it. Okay, like obviously somewhere here needs to be hidden the disposition and in planning there is hidden requirements collection, there is a hidden feasibility study, there could be hidden software design, right? So I'm saying, I'm not saying we skip these phases, we just, you know, make them less granular and especially if only one or two people are involved, they can just uh, do this sort of mental exercise, uh, exercise themselves. Or and version number three, where we still have design and implementation, like here, right? Design and implementation. But um, planning and analysis are called together as requirements, requirements gathering, okay? Requirements gathering. And, you know, maintain and uh, what? Oh, yeah, maintenance is the same. Oh, let's say I forgot to label it. Like, hey, this is the same, maintenance is the same. What we have here is testing. It doesn't mean that we, we don't test. The testing is just hidden in implementation because, uh, you know, these days it's trendy for developers to test their own code and small com companies actually don't have uh, a team of testers, so it's developers testing. So in other words, we don't need a separate stage because we develop new code, so someone tests it uh, ongoingly on an ongoing basis so why to even add a stage right but here we have it it doesn't mean it's uh, it, it's um, obsolete or it doesn't bring any value it's good to think about it maybe 
for more complex systems where you integrate a third-party solution, you need a testing environment, you need a phase where to, you test it. This could actually also depend on the project. So in a company for one project, you can have these five phases. For another project, you can have these five. When you, for example, involve a third party, this is something I've seen just recently in a company that uh, integrated a payment gateway. They required, um, the, I mean, the payment gateway required the company to test it properly. So obviously testing phase. But for some other internal projects, there is no testing phase needed because the developer who codes the system, he also tests it uh, at the same time. All right, so I wanted to, to share with you the stages so you guys understand how it differs. And sometimes people say, hey, what are the five, uh, five stages of the software development lifecycle? Well, there are no clear five stages. It also depends. You can go granular, you can go high level, it depends uh, project to project, company, company to company. What is important, I would say, at this point is to realize you have an idea, you have a project that is uh, in production and everything in between could be as granular as you want, you know, from feasibility study to analysis. It could be system analysis, software analysis, data analysis, right? It could be whatever business analysis. We could add here more and more items, but in fact, it's just a step it's just a step of on you know on in someone's uh, task list eventually all right so this is what you need to know at this point as a recruiter you need to be aware that there are certain stages it's similar when you go to to shop uh, to buy some groceries right as i mentioned in the previous video you have an idea that you are going to cook then you know you will cook something so you analyze what you are going to cook what do you need to buy? How do you, you know, where do you, where do you need to buy? Then you go and buy it and then you dispose, you know, the, the trash. So there are some parallels at this point. Remember, planning, analysis, design, implementation, maintenance. These are the, the words you need to be aware of. And then, you know, on, based, on, based on common sense, you can, you can just connect the dots, all right?